Hi everybody. Welcome back to Angie's Answers. Today I wanted to show you one of the most comfortable quilts I have ever made. It is with Minky um, and the lady that we bought it from the shop up near Appleton store, which is going to pieces is the quilt shop right next to us in Appleton. They had this every time I walked by, I had to touch it. Um, I wish that you guys could have like feel a vision, like that wonk a vision, that smell a vision. I wish you could feel this. It's so soft and it's so cuddly. Um, she said that she's pretty sure it's called Lux, Minky Lux. Um, so what I did with this, I'm going to show you how I made this blanket. I did make it two sided. So this is the other side of it, but this is so warm and so soft and it's my favorite blanket. So as you know, I live in Wisconsin. It gets pretty cold here. Um, so we wanted to make these blankets for the couch. I didn't put any batting in here, um, just the two layers of the minky and then sewed it all up. So I've got another one to make here, but I can't wait to show you how to make these amazing projects on your long arm. Set that over there for right now. So I've got two other pieces of Minky. I did cut these or have her cut them for me two and a half yards of each. So it is 60 inch wide Minky by two and a half yards long by that 90 inches. Um, one of the things that you will want to get for doing a project like this is that 60 millimeter rotary cutter. So that nice big rotary cutter. I do have a really long ruler. Um, this one is from the So Fit Company. They were from Illinois. I don't know, honestly, if they're still in business. We've had this ruler forever. So I like this because I can reach that whole 60 inches. The other big thing you want to get out, your vacuum cleaner. So when you are cutting this, it is going to make a disaster. Um, so make sure you've got your vacuum cleaner handy, ready to just trim that up. So I've got two layers. I did two different pieces, like you saw with that one too. You could do two of the same if you wanted to, um, but I liked having the contrast of this. So again, these are 60 inches wide and I did two and a half yards long, so that way I can square everything up um, and layer them together. This is gonna be a no binding method, so I am going to flip and sew this, not do any binding on it, but then I am still gonna put it on the long arm and do some quilting on it too. The first one that I made, I tried not quilting it, and I found that it just kind of moved a little bit. So I followed all of these vertical lines in here and just stitched these lines. I loaded it this way so I could stitch the long horizontal lines on the long arm. So then that way it's all held together nice and tight. So first thing we need to do is square up these fabrics. And I need to find which one is the smaller one. So I am going to hold my fabric salvage to salvage, get those salvage edges lined up, and this is gonna be messy. <laughs> Open this all the way up, and I'm just looking to make sure there's no twist. So it's a little bit twisted, so I can just shift those layers until it's hanging nice and flat. Can you see that? Yes, okay. Then I'm gonna come out to this edge here. And these are pretty even. They're not too far off. They're just a little bit, there's that little bulge right there kind of by my elbow. So I need to cut that off. And then let's find this way. Line up those two selvages and then this side it is a little bit farther off. So I need to trim this off. Because you do, when you're loading it on the machine, if you are gonna do a binding method, you would wanna put your zipper on this cut side, not on the salvage side when you're pinning it to the machine because this has more stretch to it than this does. So make sure that if you are going to load it on that you're pinning to that cut side of the minky. So I'm going to hold here, find my smaller side, come back and find my other edge. Where did it go? Sorry. There we go. This is so slippery. Okay. Make sure that's not twisted. That looks great. 
Then I'm gonna line up this shorter one with this layer here and pull that out nice and flat. I gotta slide this over just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my grid on my table to line everything up. So I'm making sure that all of my layers underneath are nice and straight. All of those are nice and flat. And then I'm gonna pull that this way just a hair and get this lined up. So I'm staying lined up on my edge here and then just smoothing this out. You can't quite see all the way over. Let me shift you guys just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I've got a little bit of a bubble right here. So let me see what's going on. I'm just gonna pull that smooth, pull that tight. There we go. And pull this one smooth too here. Okay, now I need to find my shortest layer underneath of here. So I think I can safely cut to this 51 inches, but I'm gonna put my ruler right on top of here just to double check, and I can. So you could, because this is so thick, you could cut through one layer at a time if you wanted to. That's a little bit easier. So I'm going to keep this folded out of my way and cut this one down to that 51 inches. Try not to make a huge mess. And then I'm just gonna leave that there. That's all smoothed out. And then pull this back over here. And then I can trim this one off to that 51 inches too. It's a little easier without that double thickness. Okay, oops, I didn't quite get to the corner. There we go. And then it's time to turn on the vacuum. I'm gonna clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay, all cleaned up. Now I'm gonna take some bigger safety pins and I'm gonna put them right on this edge here in the center marks for these centers of this edge. Then I'm also gonna take some safety pins and I'm gonna put them over here on this edge because I wanna know where all four centers are along all four of these edges. That's gonna help us in just a minute. I'm going to set this piece aside for right now. And then let's check our second one. So, oh, here comes some of the party. I'm gonna hold this up. Same thing, salvage to salvage. Make sure that's hanging nice and flat, nice and square. Just a little twisted. There we go. Then I'm gonna find this edge here. Make sure that's hanging nice and flat. Hold that inside layer and come over to find this corner. So this one is a little bit shorter on this side here than it is on that one. Then I'm gonna hold those two short ends together and pull this one nice and flat. I don't know if you can see all those fibers flying around already. Smooth this bottom layer out. Ooh, I got it in my eye. Straighten this up over here. So I'm even on this edge and I'm also keeping even on this side. Okay, and then this one, it looks like I can reach to the 45, no problem. So this one I'm gonna cut down to 45. So this is my smaller one. This way, it actually measures 64. So I've got 64 this way. And I'm gonna cut this down to 45, so that means I'm gonna have 64 by 90. I'm gonna try to go through all of these layers on this one because it does push down a little bit more than the other one does. <laughs> I just wanna show you. Look at how much fibers built up in my blade. Guys, this is messy. It is so much fun and it is really nice to have on top of you on those cold nights, but be prepared for the mess. 
clean that out of there. And then very gently move this piece. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna put my four pins on these four edges to mark my four center marks on here. And then I'm also gonna vacuum to clean this up a little bit and I'll be right back. I laid my original piece back on the table because I do need to cut this one down to also be 90 inches now. So you need to define which one is your shorter one and then you wanna make sure that both of them are the same size. So this one only measures 62 inches this way where the other one was 64. So I will have to trim a little bit off of that one um, this way too. You just wanna make sure both pieces are the same size. So I'm gonna cut this down so this one's also 90. This strip that I've got, oh, hold on, I didn't quite get through all the thickness. These two pieces that I've got right here, this would make an amazing scarf. So just put the right sides together and sew that into a scarf. And oh my gosh, that's gonna feel so nice. Let me get this cleaned up. So I just gently vacuum next to here. Lift it up and get all of that off of the table. I've also heard people say that they will stick the minky into the dryer with like a wet erase, or a wet erase, a wet washcloth, um, just on like air fluff to also help get rid of all of this excess. I like to just take it right outside and fluff it and um, clean it up outside, just kind of shake it outside too. So that is an option. Um, let me grab this piece back again and let me just check how wide this is. It's really close. It's closer to actually about that, that 62 inches. Okay. So now that I've got both sizes the same, both pieces the same side, let me just clean up the second one. I'm gonna take it outside and shake it. And then I'm gonna show you the next step of how we're gonna lay everything out. I wish you could see my pants and my hair and my shirt. It is everywhere, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. So next step is you want to open these up and you, if you have a really big cutting table, use that. If you've got a ping pong table, use that. You want to get this laid out all the way open, right side facing up. Open this all the way up. Get everything nice and flat. Right on the table and pretty straight if possible. Then I'm going to take my next layer and I'm going to open this one so they're right sides together. So this one's technically wrong side facing up. And this is where those safety pins come in handy because then I can line up those safety pins. Here's my center here and I can find my center here and I can line up those centers together. So just work your way around getting this piece nice and flat watching your center marks so everything is right sides together. Then the next step is completely optional. You don't have to add any batting, but you could add batting if you wanted to. So then your next step would be to cut a piece of batting that is also this same size. So we've got 64 two this way by 90 this way. Make sure that batting is also the same size and then you would lay that batting on top of this one. So I've got everything pretty close to even. Let me pull this just a little bit more this way. Looking good. Okay, so then what you wanna use is those long handy quilter, those quilting pins. They're the pearl head pins, the nice straight long pins. These are really strong and durable. So I really like to use these. So I have to think about it 
this is where my machine's gonna go, so I need to put these pins in this way. And I put them really close to each other, but I'm about like an inch and a half in from my edge, because I'm gonna sew a half inch seam here, and I don't wanna have to take these pins out, so I just moved them over. Can you see those? Kind of. So I'm about an inch and a half in from my edge, that also gives me that little bit of wiggle room that if this doesn't stay lined up perfect, then I've got some extra fabric to kind of ease that in if need be. So I'm going to work my way around this whole project and I'm just pinning these layers together really close together. Can you see my pins right here? These pins are right on right, like the point of the pin to the head of the next one. So there's not any space in between them but I'm making sure that I'm getting through all of the layers. So I've got one hand underneath so I can feel where that pin is going. Let me come this way just a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. So I'm kind of pinching around the edge here and sticking those pins in. The first blanket that I did, I put these pins a little closer to the edge and then I was having to pull them out each time. So I thought, hey, why don't I just move the pins over a little bit and then I don't have to pull them out. So I'm gonna try on this one, not pulling them out. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna pin all the way around and then I will bring you back um, to the sewing machine. We're gonna start sewing this. So you do wanna have a domestic machine and it did work best with a walking foot on that other one. So make sure if you've got a walking foot, put that on because that's gonna help ease all this thick fabric through it. But we're gonna sew most of the way around and I'm gonna leave myself an opening over on one of these sides um, so then we can flip and turn everything and then we'll top stitch that closed so it'll be completely closed up no binding necessary but a wonderful two-sided comfortable quilt so we'll come back when we are at the sewing machine and show you the next steps we are ready to sew so i'm at my domestic i've got my magnetic zircle here so I can dump all my pins that way if I do need to pull them out. I do have my walking foot installed and then I've got my edges lined up. So I am doing a half inch stitch or half inch width stitch width. Um, I think a quarter inch would just be too small and it would probably pull apart. I haven't tried it with a quarter of an inch but it may work that way too. So I am going to start sewing my way around um, remember, I'm going to leave myself an opening along this edge so that way I can flip it. So when I first start, I do want to go ahead and back tack this first section pretty good. That way, when I go to flip it, those stitches aren't going to pull out on me. So I'm going to work my way sewing around this whole thing except leaving myself about 8-10 inches of an opening to be able to flip this. I made it all the way back around. I've left myself an opening here, so I'm just gonna make sure to do a good back tack here to make sure this lines up and then it doesn't pull apart when I go to flip it. So next step, I'm going to take this and pull this right side out and then we're gonna top stitch that opening. Um, but before I do that, I do wanna go around and check and make sure from the side that I can see that I caught at least a half an inch all the way around. So I can see a little bit better on this fabric where my stitch line is. So I do wanna just do one double check all the way around to make sure I caught everything, take out any pins that I might have missed. Um, don't wanna leave these 
in the quilt. And then I will top stitch that opening closed and then we're ready to put it on the long arm. Here is that opening. So I'm just gonna hold those and it automatically kind of already rolls in, so that's great. And then I'm gonna feel where this one is and feel where this edge is. And then I'm just gonna make sure that everything is rolled under there and do a top stitch. Make sure you back tack good and just do a little top stitch along this edge here. You can kind of feel underneath where all those layers are to make sure that you're catching everything. And then I'm just kind of pulling everything tight, helping feed that through. And this is why the walking foot is so important, especially with how thick and fluffy this is. Almost there. And then when I get to this end too, a little back tack to make sure that stays locked. And then I just wanna flip it over and feel and make sure that everything is caught. Trim off my threads here. Good, okay. So completely sealed up. Now the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back to the shop and find the middles and then we're gonna load it on the long arm and do some quilting. We are back at the shop. It is the next morning. Um, I'm ready to get this prepared to load on the long arm to do some quilting. You could probably leave it without doing quilting. It is pretty heavy, so it probably wouldn't move around too much, but I just find that I like to quilt usually about the width of my hand apart. So to get this ready to load on the long arm, um, you, you of course have your favorite way to load on the long arm. If you haven't heard of it yet, we designed what's called the quick zip system. So the quick zip system is a zipper system. So we have long zippers. Um, half of the zippers get sewn to the canvases on the frame. And then the other half of the zippers we attach to a project. That way when I wanna load on the frame, it's a lot faster for me to connect those zipper pieces together and just zip right across. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But the quick zip system was designed by us. We are the originators of the zipper system on the long arm, and we've been selling it since early 2000. So we started in 99, zipper system came out right away. Um, with the zipper system, because this is already sewn together, I only have to put two zippers on this to attach this to the long arm. So I just have to find those centers of that edge. So I'm gonna take this edge that's closer to me and I want to sew, can kind of see that these are the directions of this fabric. I want to sew those nice long horizontal lines. So I'm going to load it so these are going across my frame left to right. So I'm just going to hold these two corners together and pull that out to find about where the center is and then take a safety pin and push that through my center. Then I'm going to pull this edge closer to me and I'm gonna hold these two corners, same thing, pull that out, and I'm just kind of shifting that down so this will stay a little more even and stick a safety pin in that. Um, I do have a couple video series of how to prepare quilts to load on the long arm, um, squaring up your backings, choosing the direction, and then attaching it to the zipper. Keep in mind that normally when you are attaching zippers to your backing fabric, you do have to square up that fabric. So you don't wanna just fold it in half like I did and find the centers on a normal quilt, a regular backing fabric. You do have to square that to make sure that you're eliminating any of that extra twisting. And that way you can keep those two vertical center marks, um, the center marks, excuse me, in line with each other vertically. So there is a different process when you are doing separate layers for loading onto the long arm. But because we've already sewn these layers together and I did square them ahead of time, I can just fold it in half to find the center. So then the one nice thing about the zippers is they also are stamped. So this is mine, that's why it says QC on it. But it's gonna tell me that I need to pin this zipper to the bottom edge and then this zipper pull part needs to stay to my left hand side. So I slide that over until I find my center of my zipper 
and then I'm gonna line up those two together. So I'm lining up the center of the zipper with that center mark that I just found. Take that safety pin out and push that all the way through all those layers. This zipper here, it tells me to pin it to the backing fabric top left side. Um, it does have a note on here that it should be wrong side up, but remember that's when we're loading a project. That's the three separate layers, the backing, the batting, and the quilt top. So this project, because it's already pieced, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna find that center mark and just pull this edge towards me again. Keep that there and tuck that underneath so I can line up these two centers. Then I like to use those handy quilter straight pins again, those pearl head pins. These are the long arm quilting pins. We also have these on our website, which is quiltingconnection.com. I wanna make sure that I am looking at, you can't quite see that. So see where those two layers are? I'm trying to keep this seam where I just seamed that. I'm trying to manipulate that to be even on the edge of the zipper. And then I'm just using these straight pins to push all the way down through all of those layers so that I'm catching a little bit of that pin on the, the zipper part. And I do put these pretty close together. So I'm just gonna work my way across. So I'm manipulating this edge to make sure that that seam is near my zipper and that's what I'm holding in place there. And then I'm taking one of these straight pins and pushing it all the way down. You actually can't even see like the heads of the pins because they're hiding inside of this thick minky fabric. So I am very right hand dominant. So I like to pin with the pin in my right hand, the fabric in my left hand. So I'm gonna pin this direction. But one of the other big benefits of the zipper system is I don't have to awkwardly try to pin this way. And you can see I've got this on my cutting table, so it's a nice flat surface. It's not falling all over on the roller bars. So I don't like to pin this way because that's awkward for me. But one of the other benefits of the zipper system is once I'm done going to that corner, I can take this half and just rotate it around. So that way I can still hold the fabric with my left hand and I can hold the pins with my right hand and I'm still pinning towards that comfortable direction. So it's not awkward at all. I can also do this while I'm sitting on the couch. Um, so I don't have to stand at the frame to do the pinning. And then once we've got this all pinned, we're gonna zip it onto the frame. So if you have questions about the zipper system, you can email us. Our email is info at quiltingconnection.com. Or like I said, you can check them out on our website, quiltingconnection.com. I'm going to get this pinned and then I'll meet you back over by the long arm. Ready to load. So I'm looking for this zipper that has this little slider pull on it. That's the one that's attached to the bottom edge. So I take this zipper part and bring it underneath of this roller bar to zip it onto the belly bar. So I am loading in the standard mode, not the clear view mode. It's also known as the high mode instead of the low mode. So I'm going to attach these two zippers together and then I can start working my way down the frame. I do want to take this edge here and toss that up and over. Come on back here and just pull that nice and tight. We did install an extra hand wheel crank. Sorry, let me fix this. I'm a little, little pulled that way. There we go. I did install an extra hand wheel crank on to my frame. It makes it a lot easier when I'm rolling something like this. Any backings actually, I love this hand wheel crank. So I'm gonna stop there and just make sure that this edge is nice and straight across here. That looks great. And then I'm gonna roll just a little bit at a time and smooth. 
I'm trying to watch to make sure that these side edges are staying pretty even. Then I'm gonna do another turn or so. Smooth that out, it's twisting just a little bit so I can kind of manipulate this around. So I'm watching where these straight lines are and manipulating those on the roller bar to keep those straight. Then once it falls, I can stop rolling. I just wanna tuck this edge under a little bit. That looks good. And then I can keep rolling just a little bit more. Tuck that edge under. Good, that looks pretty great. Then I can take this piece here and I'm gonna zip it onto this one. Sorry, I do need to lift up this ratchet here so then I can unroll that canvas. Then I can take this zipper, make sure it's not twisted, pull that canvas closer to me and zip these together. Okay, let's keep rolling this up a little bit, tuck that edge under. Looking pretty good. Good. Okay, so I've got a nice flat surface to start working on. And just make sure that your roller bars are tight, not too tight so you're not like overstretching, but nice and tight. Then, one of the things I definitely recommend while you're gonna sew is that glide foot. So the glide foot comes from Handy Quilter. It's a little bowl shaped foot. That's gonna help so it doesn't push the layers of the fabric too much. Um, let me turn my lights off. That makes it a little easier for you guys to see. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is, remember, um, remember our machines always like to move from the left towards the right. That's the easiest way so then it's not gonna shred or break your thread. Your bobbin case is rotating clockwise. So you wanna work with that clockwise rotation. So I'm gonna start over here on the left-hand side. I do have the pro stitcher turned on so those gears are engaged. It puts a little bit more drag on the machine and that's gonna help me move in a straight line. You could tune your channel locks on. You could also quilt this any way you want. So if you wanted to do a meander or you know a free motion design, you can quilt anything you want on this. Um, disclaimer though, it really doesn't show up that much. So on a regular minky fabric that isn't this luxe, this thick minky, then you really can see your designs. But I learned on that one that I did the brown one, you really couldn't see my stitching at all. So you could try it, see if you like it. I'm just gonna stick with straight lines because that's easy for me and I'm gonna do them about the width of my hand apart. So I'm gonna start over here on this left-hand side. I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread, pull that over just a little bit, and then I am gonna turn it on and just do a little bit of a wiggle left to right to lock those in, and then I'm gonna start working my way across. You could, if you wanted to, put your side clamps on too to help pull that over. I'm trying not to overstretch the project at all though, so I'm actually not gonna use my side clamps. I'm also um, using up some partial bobbins. So I've got some partial gray colored bobbins that you're re really, again, not gonna be able to see that color of the thread. So this is a great way to use up some of this, those partials. So I'm gonna work my way all the way down. I'll come down and probably do another couple lines here, roll everything forward, and I'm gonna work my way quilting the quilt. So I'm gonna do one line, I'll bring up my thread at the end, bring the machine back over and stitch from that left hand side all the way across. So I'll work on quilting this quilt. I finished the first three stitching lines and I wanted to show you a couple tricks that I do once I get over here. So I'm not gonna try to bring up my bobbin thread because this fabric is so thick. So I'm just gonna slide the machine off of the edge and here's my tails right here. And then I'm just snipping both of those. Again, this fabric is so thick, you really can't see it. Another thing that tip that I learned on the last one I did, I just take a straight pin and I'm gonna put that pin right here because that was the last one that I just stitched. Um, when I went to roll the other one forward to do the next section, I was like, shoot, which one did I stitch? So if you just stick 
a pin here in the end that's going to help you know where your last stitching line was um, i've got a little extra bulk rolling up over here on the sides and that's okay um, i'm not super concerned with it um, i know maybe if i would have eased that in a little better as i was piecing it it probably would have laid a little bit more flat but this is totally fine so i've got my pin in for my next one i'm going to go to the end of the frame lift up the ratchet so i can roll everything forward so I'm going to lift up this one down here and then I'm going to roll this forward and I'm looking at where that pin is, making sure that that stays close to this solid roller bar here and then I can tighten everything back down. Um, I may put on my side clamps over here. This edge is rolling just a little bit so I'm going to put these clamps on just to help hold this a little more square. And I'll probably have to move them um, when I'm ready to come like stitch down that side. So now I can see where my pin is right here. I can see where that one is. So I'm going to come down to this line right here and I'm going to take this pin back out and just set it at the end of the table. And then I'm going to work my way back across. So I'm just showing myself I already stitched this one. Now I'm going to come down and stitch that one and I'll start working my way down this next section. All done. Now I'm just going to take and cut off all of my starting threads for each row. And then let's lift up that latch. I missed one. So I can roll it back this way and get all those threads. Just a little easier to do while it's on the frame. You could put it up on your cutting table if you wanted to as well. So I'm just going to trim off all these starting threads. Okay, then let me unroll this just a little bit more. I can lift up on this one and unroll this whole thing. And then let's unzip it. So I start unzipping that one, start on this, zipping this one. Then I can grab both of them and then unzip at the same time. So it's super fast to get projects off. All right, let me turn you guys just a little bit this way. And this is it. See if you can see the quilting on this back side. Really not much at all. You can see some of those straight lines, but really not much at all. So then I'm just gonna take this zipper off. I'm gonna wrap it up. This is a gift for my mom for her birthday. So um, I know she'll love it because it's super warm, super cozy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Easiest way to make a two-sided quilt without having to bind it. And this is just wonderful fabric. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at quiltingconnection.com or you can call us at 262-723-6775. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow and then share this video with any quilters that you know would like to make a project like this as well. So thank you again for watching and for joining Angie's Answers. Have a great day.